for today how okay for today i would like to give some brief and talk about the introduction of respond surface metallurgy as a tool for the automation process and the output for this lecture we hopefully uh, we give the overview of rsm in the automation process and the second uh, to give a brief tutorial for students to establish and operate rsm hopefully at the end of this lecture you all be able to have your own design set of experiment based RSM. And this is outline for my lecture today. And basically, they have a two slots. The first slot, I will talk about the overview of RSM. Uh, just to surface, because when we want to explore in RSM, you need a, a few series of RSM. And then this, after I brief the overview of RSM, then we, I give you a tutorial. Uh, design expert software. We, we are using the design expert to operate the RSM. Okay. And as you know, when we do research, of course, some of the research need to optimize to get the best output. And in order to do so, you need to optimize a few parameters uh, to get the best response. So consider this paper. Okay. Uh, one factor, one type of uh, conventional method in the optimization. Okay. This paper and their work, they want to optimize the enzyme production from uh, using the solid state fermentation. And what they do, they optimize four parameters. Okay. As you can see, substrate concentration, inoculum size, incubation temperature, and incubation days. Okay. In the off uh, approach, uh, uh, what they do is they try to fit, uh, no, they try to adjust one parameter. As you can see from here, uh, the first step, they want to adjust the substrate concentration. Meanwhile, at the, uh, while the other factor are fit with the constant, okay? So in this uh, their study, so they adjust uh, the parameter value from the five to 30, and they found the 10 can give the best condition. And then they use this the, the value to another optimization study. Okay. And they repeat and so on. And the question uh, arise: um, how this method uh, can, can uh, determine which are among the factors can give the, the best okay, uh, the significant factor? Uh, is it the subtract? Is it in the column size? incubation temperature or this. So how this approach can, can determine? And the second, the question are arise, between this factor, is it there are any correlation between substrate and inoculum size? Is it there are any significant factor that can give a maximum production? So this of uh, have a some limitation. So to overcome this problem, uh, maybe you have heard multivariate statistical method. Huh? where this in this uh, statistical method where you have uh, two or more three factors can uh, optimize simultaneously at one time and one of them the this method is called response surface metallurgy rsm and the background of rsm this was developed by box and wilson in 1950 and this is a, a little bit of definition of the rsm where in the rsm you need to have a set collection of statistical technique, uh, maybe two or three more statistical technique, and use in design of experimental model based on experiment data. Means that once you get your experiment data, you will insert into the software. And in RSM, you have a some RSM model uh, to fit with data and come up with the prediction. So with the model RSM, you know or you can identify what are the main effective or what are the main parameters? And the second, using the RSM, you know what is the, is it there any correlation factor between the variable? And using the RSM also, they can use to make prediction. Okay, later we can see uh, the main objective of RSM is to maximize or minimize or what design you want uh, by optimize the response, which influence by several independent variables. Means that you can 
optimize simultaneously. Maybe you have a two or three more factor you can uh, run together to get a best to get a best condition. Huh? And a little bit of uh, advantage RSN over the off -fight. Of course, off fight also can determine uh, the the significant factor. But you need a last a larger uh, number of experiment. You need a lot of experiment. Uh, compared to the RSM, you just because the, you can run uh, two or three or two or more factor at the at the one time, so you can reduce a smaller number of experiment. And the most important about the RSM is, like I said before, is we can enable us to understand the interaction. Let's say I want to study uh, the enzyme production factor uh, factor A, factor B, and factor V. Is it there are any interaction between factor A, factor B to the enzyme. Uh, besides that, you can identify the main effect among the factor which are fermenter uh, can give a significant effect. Okay, And the finally, this RSM can provide the optimal value of parameters. Uh. Okay, uh, just to want to share, for the past 20 years, uh, uh, you can see uh, there are uh, a huge increase uh, trend. Uh, a paper about using the RSM. Most uh, RSM apply in the food processing, chemical process, and chemical chemistry, biochemical process, and industrial. You can see at uh, 2021, around 6,000 papers have been published that relate about the RSM. Okay. So before we are go into more detail in RSM, I need you to know what is the important term in RSM. Okay. Uh, as you can see, this a paper is about enhanced methane production. So it depends on you. Is it you want to maximize? Is it you want to minimize? Is it you want to get the desire? So it depends. It's, it's called experimental domain. Huh? So in this paper, uh, the paper want to uh, maximize the methane production using the RSA. Okay, the second part, the factor or independent variable. What the factor that you want to study to to enhance the methane production. So in this uh, paper, they want to optimize simultaneously uh, variables such as F1 ratio, organic leading, and initial pH. Uh, this were called variable. Eh? So once you already get a variable, you need to know what is the level of variable. Level of variable means the range. Uh, for example, like in this study, they want to study initial pH, what the range there, between low and high. Uh, in this study, the, the low pH is seed, the high is eight. Huh? Uh, this is called level of variable. Uh, and they say the, the, the next is the response. What they want, uh, what thing that you want to optimize. So in this paper, the response are methane production. So in our research, it's okay if you have a uh, uh, two or more response you can use in the RSM. Okay, and lastly, the response of plus is the graph that generate by the RSM where they use the specific model to fit with the experimental data. So from this graph, you know, you have you you can know more understanding about the process. For example, in this graph, you can see the metal lead. You can see if you increase the organic loading. Organic then they can produce the high metal okay, something like that. Huh? Okay. Okay, there's a very crucial part that you need to know when you want to use the RSN. What the important stage of RSN? First, you need to know the, the factor that you want to study, the selection and determination, the range of level parameter or the variable. Huh? Let we, later we will cover more detail about this. Huh? So once you already get the factors and the level of the par parameters, uh, then uh, you try to fit with the experiment design. Okay. Once you get uh, the factor they want to study, what you get the level parameter, uh, you you need to choose the experiment design. In RSN, there are a few design that need you to do. Okay. Then after that. Once we did a design, you need to evaluate uh, the model. Okay, 
because uh, once we get the design, the, the, the software will generate a set a few as a few of experiment. So from the experiment, you need to fit experiment data with the model that suggests from the RSM. Once you have a RSM model, you need to evaluate. You need to evaluate. Is it this model has already fulfilled to make the prediction? Is it uh, this model has already fulfilled the criteria uh, to make uh, you know to study the effect or study the interaction? Uh, so once you already evaluate this model, then the next stage you need to do is to verify and obtain weighted value. So the RSM model will generate or we come out with the what is the optimum value uh, in order to get uh, the, the, the desire that you want. Either you want to minimize a product, minimize response or maximize response. Okay. So now the question is what are software used to operate RSN? Basically, there are four. Uh, Minitech, you can download from Minitech here. MATLAB, uh, Statical Design and design expert. So for today, I would like to show, later on we to show how we want to operate design expert uh, using the RSM. Okay, you can download this design expert from this link. Uh. Okay, now we discuss more uh, detail about the stages of the RSM. As you know, the first stages you need to know uh, to select and determine the, the range of level of factor. But before we, you come in, in the RSM, you need to know or you need to identify because some of the process uh, involve of many parameters. They search a lot of parameters that you need to optimize. Let's say, for example, you need to optimize uh, the process A. Then you need to uh, you need to optimize sorry ten parameters. So before you come up with the RSM, I think the first step you need to do you need to identify is it part of variable is uh, significant. Or, 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 or you can refer for the previous journal. Uh, maybe some of the previous journal they can uh, state or oh, this uh, this variable uh, significant uh, something like that. And the point I want to say is before you want to come out in the RSM, you need to identify a variable the tested parameter. And in, in order to do so, you need to you do screen. Uh, the screening first ah. maybe you can use the factory design like woman design let's say you have a uh, 10 uh, 10 parameter so among the parameter uh, which parameter are the most or uh, or four uh, or three or four yeah, can give a uh, best influence to the response uh, but in this uh it, but this the, this chapter is not included in this uh, section ah, because this section will cover how you want to optimize uh, this data you, you want to screening the variable. Uh. So once you already identify the variable that you want to study, now the second you need to know the range of level tested parameter. So this range is very important. Uh, like for example, you want to optimize uh, factor A, factor B, and factor C. So you need to know what is the range of level tested parameter low and high. Okay. Uh, in order to get the range of level, maybe you can, some of uh, previous researchers, they can uh, refer to the previous, let's say you want to optimize the enzyme production. So they, they look the other previous paper like pH, or oh, they found oh, the previous pH uh, used around pH 20, uh, 2 to 10 pH. So you just apply the range. However, there are some limitation if you refer the previous uh, paper because the of course the first reason is the condition is not similar uh, compared to the previous uh, paper. So how we want to get the good range of level test parameter? Uh, we come back to the offer. You can do the preliminary study. So I I take the this offer offer data. Okay, this uh so. How we want to uh, get the 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 uh, the level the the optimized level of range? So you can see from here. Uh, let's say you want to optimize xylose production. Uh, the range between five and thirty. Five and thirty. Okay, maybe you can refer or the other. Oh, you find oh five and thirty. But when, uh, but the problem is, 
the range is not the range is, is too wide okay uh, the crucial part of the uh, the the range is you must make sure that the best condition must uh, available within the range for example like this, even though in this uh, first 5 and 30 the best condition is within the range of 5 and 30 but it's not too specific you need to to narrow down the range uh, the wide range uh. okay for example like this okay subtract ni between 5 and 30 so the the good range is between because you know the 10 is give the best condition so the good range is between 5 and 15 uh, that's why uh, i not prefer you take the the, the previous uh, paper let's say the previous paper say uh, between 5 uh, 25 but like i said before the condition is not similar to us so maybe they are some you know uh, differentiate if you get the result huh? so the the first rule you must get the range you must make sure that the best condition is within that range okay don't take the range let's say 5, uh, 10 to the 13 10 to the 13 because you don't have the the low and high range so you may make sure the range is cover the low and high range huh? Um, in this case, between 5 and 15 range. Okay. How about the second uh, parameter? So you take the 5 and 15. Uh, 5 and 15 parameter. Now you have the first parameter uh, uh, range 5 and 15. The second, 5 and 15 or so. Okay. The third incubation temperature, what the optimum range? Okay, between 20 and 50, you know that 20 is a lowest and 50 the highest. But if you do the off right, you can know oh, the best range is between 25 and 35. Because if you use the wide range, let's say, uh, even though uh, the best condition is between this range, uh, with, uh, between the 20 and uh, 50, uh, I'm afraid that the model cannot make a good prediction. So, so in order to make model make a good prediction, you need to the narrow down. Lah. So they can identify the good prediction between 25 to 35. Okay. The third between 25 and 35. Uh, same goes to approach to the incubation days. Lah. Okay. So now you have a uh, parameters and the optimal wave. Now you go to the software. Okay. So. This uh, interface of the design expert 13, uh, design 13, uh, so you can see uh, in design expert C, you have a few design. Uh. Later we can cover uh, about the interface. Uh. Just want to show once you already get the factor. Uh, in this case, I we have a four factor. So you, you put here four factor. Uh, you insert uh, the name factor. And the low, uh, this one with the low and high, uh, the minimum and the high range. Uh. In this case, 50 and 15. So I put uh, 50 and 15, 5 and 15, 25, 35. So then you, uh, okay, so you now have a, a table for the, uh, for the, for the, this uh, that value. Now you need to choose uh, the design experiment. Okay, in RSN, there are, uh, there are a few design experiment huh? okay, that you need to use. Huh? Okay, but it, it, because it, in this interface, I choose the CCD, that's why it come up with 30 run. Huh? Okay, now you come up with the uh, second stage. Huh? So once we already get the, the factor and the level of the factor that, tell, that you want to study, we need to choose the experiment design. So you have a few experimental design, full factorial design, box bacon, uh, CCD, DM and PBD. So you can see from the uh, interface of a uh, design expert, you have a few designs CCD, box bacon, optimal. So in this case, I choose CCD. Lah. But if you uh, refer to the previous data, the uh, BBD, uh, box bacon design, and central com composite design are commonly used. Uh, if you want to use RSM, mostly they use the box bacon design and central composite design. So among between CCD and BBD, 
CCD is more better compared to BBD because they can make more prediction because they avoid uh, because they involve of uh, uh, involve many points uh, compared to the BBD. Uh. Let's say that's why if you compare to if you use the CCD, uh, the the result come up 30 run for the three parameter. But if you use the box bacon, uh, the experiment can be reduced. Uh, I, run, I think around 20 something like that lah. Uh, if you compare to the uh, CCD, okay. So if you want to make, uh, to use the RSI, make sure you choose uh, between of uh, CCD and what's bacon. Uh. Okay, now, so once you choose, so in this case, I choose CCD. Uh, so I choose CCD. So when I choose CCD, uh, this, the design expert will generate design of experiment. So about 30 experiment that you need to do. So you need, as you can see, uh, 30 experiment that you need, uh, for each experiment, there are different combination. Uh. Uh, for example, for the first experiment, you have different combination 10, uh, 10 combination of substrate, 15, and 13. So you need to follow this. So, so, so you need to follow all this interaction. Uh. So once you get the, uh, this one refer to your, what you want to measure. Uh. Yeah, in this case, you want to measure the enzyme production and the concentration of enzyme. So once you will get your design, so you follow. Uh. Uh, you run as one, you follow this 10, 50, what you get. Uh, you just insert the data here. Okay. Okay, once you get the data, all the 30 experiment you get, or you put inside all data. So the, the, the next step need to do RSM need to fit the model. Okay. In RSM, usually they use the first and second polynomial, second equation. Uh, first order and second order equation. But usually they fit. Uh, they goes to uh, they go to into second order polynomial where there's more easy to make prediction and the optimum the experiment data can fit with this second order means that all your your experiment data all your experiment data can can fit with this equation lah, second order polynomial compared to the first order because you know the first order your first linear the straight line so how your data can fit with the straight line so uh, of course, we could go to the second order because it's more flexible, more curvature, eh? near to the optimization. That's why when you see the other paper RSM, they use the second order polynomial. Okay. Okay. Now, for the third and fourth stage, uh, how you want to evaluate the model and how to make the prediction, I will show uh, in the tutorial. Eh? So now we come with the slot two tutorial design expert. Uh, software so you can download uh, the software from here okay so in this uh, tutorial i want to optimize uh, i want to optimize uh, dna hybridization uh, condition uh, for electrochemical detection using rsm so i noticed that there are four parameters that can affect the hybridization condition uh, ph sodium concentration temperature and radiation time so, so we start with the uh, tutorial. Uh, so I will go to software. Uh, okay. Uh, so once you already download, you can get this icon design expert 13. Uh. Okay. Uh, you can see my uh, design expert 13. Nope, yeah, uh, PPT. I think you have to unshare this one first and then share the new, uh, new screen. Oh, this one has oh. to be unshared. Stop sharing and then share the other one. Okay. Okay, I share. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to open just like the slide just now. You have to open up the uh, right click. Then you can see my uh, ah, design. Right, right. Okay. So, so when you already download yeah, uh, design expert uh, version 30, yeah. Uh, okay, you can see uh, this uh, interface uh, uh, design expert trial version. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, then you go to the new design. Uh, you go to the new design. Uh, okay, you can see uh, you can see a list of uh, statistical uh, method. Uh, uh, 
uh, either you, uh, if you want to choose uh, the, uh, to choose the, the screening uh, the screening uh, the screening factor that you can come to the factorial but if you want to optimize you come with the response surface okay now we come to go to response surface so as you can see this interface for the response surface okay uh, so this uh, number of factor they want to study uh, let's say you you want to optimize two factor uh, and you use uh, the design ccd so how many experiments that you need to run 13 13 experiment okay if three parameters 20 experiment if, if you use the ccd yeah if you compare to the box taken how many yeah uh, 70 lah 70 70 if you use the ccd uh, 20 run yeah? but as i said before ccd is more better than uh, box bacon because uh, they have more points so we, when they come with more points they can more can get more prediction huh? so now we have a uh, let's say i want to study four parameter huh? uh, i want to uh, like just study uh, four parameter well, okay so then i put lah uh, name of parameter ph okay and acl consideration huh? uh, Letter temperature and abrasion time. Okay, temperature and abrasion time. Okay, abrasion time. So this unit you can put ah. Uh, okay, the low and high you can put ah. Uh, the low range ah uh, uh, means that in in this case, I put lah uh, the low. It depend lah uh, on what you find lah. Uh, okay. So just uh, we share the dummy, uh, the dummy data. So uh, just want to share. Uh, if you use the three, four, uh, four factor, then this design will generate thirty run, uh, thirty experiment. So let's say you have uh, some problem. Let's say some uh, limitation. You cannot run at the one time. You cannot run at one day. Uh. for example, thirty run. You you unable to run at one time uh, because you know maybe you have a limitation. In term of instrumentation, also on it. Eh? So what what you can do is you can divide uh, your thirty experiment into blocks. Ah, eh? uh, for this I use block one because I confident uh, to run thirty experiment at what time at, at one day. So let's say if you have some difficulty, you can divide into two. So it means that at one uh, at the one day you can use a certain certain block, and the other day you can use the another block. Uh, means that. But if you confident you can run all you can uh, you can run all this you can choose the block one huh? okay and the option okay this uh, experiment consists of 30 run that consists of 24 and center point center point means that actually this uh, experiment has already a similar point I mean, it can become a replicate huh? the similar point huh? so the other 24 huh? so for the option I usually choose the face center, lah. Okay, because in the uh, okay, the the difference between the box bacon and central composite design. If you go to box bacon, there are no other, uh, there are no other, what we call there are no other level. You uh, just low, high, low, middle, high, eh? low, middle, high. But if you come with this uh, central composite design, you have four level, lah. Low, middle, middle is not included here. Tapi usually there are five level: low, middle, high, minus alpha, and plus alpha. Means that you have need five point. Yeah, that's why uh, some of researcher they choose the box because because you need three level. Means that when you study the temperature, uh, you just use uh, for example twenty five Celsius. Uh, 35 Celsius and 60 Celsius. Compared to the CCD, you need the five level. For example, at temperature, you need maybe you have a five set of temperature lah. 35, 35, 40, 50, and so on. Uh, that's why uh, some of research they use box bacon. They want to uh, they more easy lah in terms of uh, the level lah. So when you come to CCD, you have a 30 run. So we go to the next. Okay, this one this response. Because the response that I want to measure is a uh, hybridization and eh? hybridization current. So I put high, choose it, uh, hybridization current. 
So let's say you want to measure or you want to analyze more. This is uh, CCD can also. Uh, uh, you can measure two or more, uh, four or five. Uh. So in this case, I, I prefer to rest one. Uh. So you choose the finish. Okay. Or oh, because I, I not put uh, my uh, my the level of uh, range, uh. so I, I take the dummy, uh, the dummy data. Okay, my dummy data on design. Okay, let's say, uh, let's say uh, the design already suggests or oh, the experiment. So for each experiment, you need to follow the instruction. It means that I need to adjust OPA7, uh, so the configuration 1.25, uh, temperature 42 Celsius and hydration 10 Celsius. So I follow this instruction. So I insert my data here. Uh, I follow this data. So later, after I finish, uh, insert all the data. Okay, insert all the data, 30 experiment, all the data. Then you can go straight to the analysis. Uh. Go straight to analysis. Okay. Now you go to start analysis. Uh. Okay, then you, now you we come with the, how we want to evaluate the model. Uh. So you, you switch to the fit summary. Uh. Okay. So once you get the data, uh, the explain data. So in this RSM, the explain data try to fit with the RSM model. Okay. In the RSM model, there are few model, uh, first order or linear, two F1, quadratic and cubic. Means that thirty explain data they want to try for each model, and the design expert or RSM they suggest, oh, amount of them quadratic. Uh, are very fit well uh, into the SPM data. So they suggest quadratic model. But even though they suggest the quadratic model or the second order polynomial, uh, but you need to consider is it this model has already fulfilled the characteristic to make prediction or to identify the specific effect. So in order to so you need to to look the a few characteristic. Uh, first you need to p value is it significant this model? Yes, a lack of p value. Lack of uh, p value is very important. You must you must make sure that the model is non significant, non non significant because uh, non significant lack lack of p enable this model met a uh, met a prediction. Huh? Means that your experiment data is fit well with the model. But in this case, you as you can see, the quadratic is not is significant. But we want uh, not significant. But this quality is not significant. Okay, there's another one. But you can the other day you can see the adjust R square. Uh, the adjust R square uh, must need the close to the one. Ah, uh. in this case, zero point eight. Ah, uh. so the pretty R two. Ah, uh, the pretty R two is very uh, slow. Ah, uh, very low. Ah, uh. it should be above than zero point eight. Ah, uh. okay. Even though this model. Suggest a quality, but they cannot. They cannot be a good model. Okay, what we want to do is we need to diagnose. Okay, we need to diagnose. Go to diagnostic tool. So there are a few uh, diagnostic tool. Uh. Okay, you can see uh, here the normal plot uh, between normal plot and residual. And usually this point, actually the point they, they represent as your number of experiment. Uh, so the, the uh, so this uh, this point consists of thirty experiment. Uh. 30 point, uh, 30 point. So you can see, oh, this point is re really far from the straight line. What point? Uh? So you can refer to uh, oh, the run two, okay? The run two, and you can see the here, uh, the residual plot, the uh, residual versus, sorry, uh, residual versus predict. Uh. Uh, supposedly, all the points must be within the range between four and minus 40. But there are one point is become the outlier. What point? Uh? Or run order two. Uh? So in I think uh, in easy way to diagnose, you go to the uh, even though you go to good list, you find or oh, this uh, one point is become outlier. Uh, to make it easy, you can go to the report. 
okay, the report. So from the report, okay, for the report, they can uh, the, this design expert can identify lah what the point uh, is become the outlier. Ah. Okay, we can see ah. You can look here the report one and two ah, observation more than thirty point eight uh, acid limit. So you just refer the the red and blue line ah. So in this case, I found that okay, run order four there's a problem. Okay, I just uh, record okay number two, number six, number fourteen because okay if you look the number run two okay, my experiment data I get thirty seven, okay thirty seven, but the model predict you supposedly get forty one but I get thirty seven, so that's why they come up with this signal lah, uh, the red light signal, same goes to the other point lah six. I just follow. Okay, so I take me usually. Usually, it's difficult lah if if uh, or, apa, to get a fit well. So you need to repeat ah. So in this case, I need to repeat a few point ah, in order to fit the data. Ah. So I take as uh, uh, experiment number two, number six, number fourteen, number seventeen or five five point ah. So I need to repeat again ah. My point to repeat again to uh, in order to fit the data. Eh? Okay. So once I get uh, you know I repeat again, so I come out with, with uh, go to the lab. So I repeat again. So when I repeat, I just insert the uh, data. Okay. I, I take the. Okay. Once I ready, uh, you know, I repeat again five the point. Eh? Let's say for example two, I repeat again uh, C one point five. So I insert again lah the data. Okay, then we start analysis. Is it this uh experiment data if fit well? Okay, then we look here. We come to fit summary. Okay, now we look again uh, to evaluate this model lah. Okay, among of the model for I think this uh, suggest uh, zero point zero one. And log of it is above than 0, 0, 0.05 means that non significant, lah. not significant. Uh, meanwhile, for the adjust and predict is close to the one. Okay, so so means that this model can make prediction, lah. can make prediction and give a better response. So the next stage is we need to analyze the data. So once you already get uh, you know the good model, uh, the good model, you need to analyze the data. Okay, then come up with the ANOVA, ANOVA for the quadratic model. So this ANOVA quadratic model come out from the second order polynomial. So for the experiment data, it come out with this ANOVA analysis. Okay, from here we can analyze. Okay, you can see the A, A, B, C refer to the code value for the pH buffer, sodium chloride, and temperature hybridization. Okay. Okay, from this data, from a bit, you can identify among the uh, among this factor which are the most significant. Okay, okay, uh, based on the analysis table, you can see all the all the parameters are significant. You can see the below than zero point zero five. Okay, this is for the first information. Okay, all the parameters are significant. So among the among the parameter which are the most significant, uh, you can look your F value. You can look here the F value. Uh, you look in term of the magnitude, ah, okay. Uh, which are the larger magnitude? I can see the B and D. Compared to B and D, B is a larger magnitude. So the larger magnitude it represent how how strong the uh, inflow to the the response. So you can see, uh, sodium chloride are the most inflow, lah. Uh, from the data here, sodium chloride are the most inflow, followed by hybridization, followed by pH buffer and temperature. Uh, so compared to Ophite, Ophite cannot identify uh, what are the, the most significant. Okay, and now we go to the interaction A and B. Uh, a B refer to interaction between pH and sodium chloride. Okay, uh, is it there any interaction between pH and sodium chloride? You can look here. Okay, based on the ANOVA table, you can see AB uh, interaction between pH and sodium chloride uh, correlate, significant correlate, uh, but AC not correlate. 
means that pH buffer and temperature are not correlate. BC correlate, BD correlate. So once you get the, this input, means that oh, from the data, oh, you know, oh, how you know that oh, pH buffer and and so the chloride can in, have a interaction together. So how this pH buffer and sodium chloride can be interact. So you can give more input data to your writing, to your thesis uh, uh, for this interaction. Uh. Uh, maybe there are interaction, uh, okay. Then after that, uh, this, uh, uh, actually you can uh, copy paste to the, your paper. Uh, uh, from this, they, they, they already summarized. Uh, uh, from, this, uh, from this model, you say that ABC are uh, significant monitor. Uh, you can copy and write. Uh. So just want to share the final equation. Uh. So once you get the unknown analysis, you can translate this uh, final equation into second order polynomial. Uh. Okay, from here. So, so all this experiment data are uh, convert into second order polynomial. Uh. Okay. So uh, even though you, uh, beside you use the analysis table, you can identify the significant factor by look by just looking this equation okay so you uh, you just look here uh, because there are four factor you look uh, the linear factor linear effect a uh, b c and d so between 1.62 3.66 0.7 and 3. Point, which are the contribute the larger magnitude b and d so from this equation you know that oh factor b are the most significant, are the most influence, okay? And the factor C is not significant, uh, not, not significant, uh, it's the less influence uh, because all the factors are significant. Uh. Okay, back to the design expert. So once we already analyze, analyze the, the, the RSM, now you come with the model graph. Okay, usually, once you have already get the, the equation, you want to translate the second order into uh, more visualize. Yeah, in terms of that, you can visualize in the uh, counter plot. This one uh, called counter plot. Or you can visualize using, you go to video, new graph, uh, 3D surface. Okay. So this uh, 3D surface of the surface plot. Uh, Okay, now you have a 3D surface, the, the factor between A and B, pH buffer and sodium uh, concentration. So from, the, this, uh, from this graph, actually you can put more data, more explanation. So in order to get the high hybridization condition, what you need to do is you need to adjust pH around seven, I think. If you look here, okay, around, around between 7, 7 to 7, 5. And the sodium, sodium concentrate, you need to adjust to the higher lah, because when you adjust the higher, the, they give a better result. Huh? So this interaction between A and B. So you can go to the another interaction, A and C also. So uh, from this picture, you can see uh, the inflow interaction between A and C. You can see the temperature is not give a significant effect. Even though you increase the, the temperature for 45, but it, it do not give a, uh, uh, you not give a result, uh, you not give a better result uh, compared to the pH buffer. Uh, once you increase uh, the pH buffer, at a certain point, the abrasion efficiency become improved. Compared to uh, temperature, it's not give any significant if you adjust from the 40 and 45. So, it, so from the, this uh, graphical, you also can manipulate. Rather, you use the 45, much better if you 40, then uh, 40 Celsius, uh, something like that. Uh. So you can repeat uh, the, other, the other interaction, pH buffer. Okay. So once we already get your graphical result, now we come with the optimization. Uh. How this model can match the prediction point? Okay, so you come to the optimization. You come to optimization, and you can see, uh, click the numerical. So from the numerical, you have four factor. 
uh, pH buffer, sodium chloride. So you click the pH buffer here or your, your desired factor. So what the goal uh, you want to optimize is goal within the range. Uh, it's in range. Uh, so you adjust within the range. Uh, same goes to the sodium chloride within the range. Temperature you set within the range. Hybridization also set within the range. And your response. Is it your response you want to maximize or to reduce, uh, to minimize? So in my case, I want to maximize. Lah. So it, it depends on you. Lah. Either you want to get the target or your range. So in my case, I want to maximize. So this RSM model will be predict uh, the, the, range within, uh, the range within the factor to get the, the maximum uh, response. Okay, now you go to, okay, once you really choose, go to the solution. So the RSN will suggest a solution to get the better response. Eh? So what RSN suggests? Oh, there are 100 solution from that can give a highest, uh, highest response, eh? highest hybridization efficiency. Eh? So you can see, it depends. Eh? Uh, if me, I get 100 solution. So you, you come with the number one. Eh? You choose with the desired one. Eh? Uh, you choose with the one. Huh? So let's say I choose the number one. So I choose the number one. Then I go to the. Uh, you need to repeat lah. Huh? Okay. I'll go to the point prediction. Once I choose the 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 solution one, you go to the post NLC point prediction. Oh, forget. Huh? Let's say. So mean okay. This solution means that when you use a uh, pH seven, uh, this RSM model. They suggest when you use the pH buffer 7, 0.2, 1.4, 44, 13, well, using the RSM model, they, they can predict or you can get 58. Uh, if you use this condition, you can get this condition. Uh, so you come with the point prediction. Let's say you have the problem. Uh, you want to adjust. Let's say it's difficult to adjust pH buffer 7.21. You can adjust uh, use the sheet. You can adjust. Uh, go to 7.2, 7.2. For sodium chloride, you can adjust 7.1.5. Temperature, 44. Because it's really, really difficult eh, to get 44 point something like that. Eh. So for the sodium chloride, you adjust for 30. So if you, okay. So now, now we using your, your adjust, your parameter, 7.2, 1.5, 44, 30. Ni, the model we suggest, or you will get, 47.93. Uh, so how you want to confirm it? You need to verify. How, you need to, how, you, how do you need to verify? You need to repeat. So you use this parameter, 7.2, 1.4, You repeat again. You repeat. Is it you can get the close to the, the predict one, 47? Uh, so you repeat. Lah. You can run. Lah. Uh, try PK of five. Uh, then you, then you can get the result either to tell or uh, this result is close to the predict one. Uh, okay. So this one is uh, I get from the uh, get for the experiment data lah. Let's say I I I repeat again uh, pH buffer 7.8, 1.5. So I insert the data here. So the the result will tell lah either uh, this model can verify or not. Okay. I think uh, I think I already finished lah. The tutorial how to operate the RSM. Okay, any question? Yeah, any question? <laughs> Quest yeah, any question I from? Uh. I had a question regarding the the workflow. Um, it's it looks much like, a little bit much like machine learning also again because they ada like feature selection uh, and then after the optimization then kita boleh see the parameters that affect kita punya experiment right so is my understanding correct? Ah uh, yeah, they look the because the machine learning is uh, after the RSM but uh, based on my knowledge they are uh, they also use the machine learning in the RSM. Uh, means that uh, you can use uh, RSM ni uh, look like uh, seperti macam machine learning jugalah uh, 
Tapi dia tak because, macam ni lagi. Ha. Oh, dia belum macam macam ni. Because uh, ha. from the graph, we can see that uh, we will converge to the global minimum of the surface, right? So it looks very yeah, similar betul. to machine learning punya teknik. Yeah, so itu yeah, yang I nampak lah. Hmm. Betul. Ya, yeah, machine learning pun dia so to make a, a good prediction ah, same goes to the RSN. Uh, yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so my 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 question would be like um what's the advantage of like uh, doing it this way eh, compared to maybe just uh, statistical punya correlation because i can see from the value there there was the f value right so we can see if there's significant difference or not so uh, what's your view on that oh uh, uh if you use the rsm uh, some of the experiment you can run simultaneously lah Uh, if you want to do correlation, maybe you use at least uh, two factors. But if you you use the RSM, you run you can run three or four factors simultaneously, and you come out with the model prediction. Uh, means that you need a uh, minimize uh, experimental work uh, compared to the you know the correlation or statistical work. Sir. Uh, all right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Any more questions?